I was gonna tell you what I like about this motorcycle. Let me hit the highway again. Look at this chrome over here. Years ago with my wife, and I just wanted to live that moment again. I wanted. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going for a ride, taking Striker out, my 2022 Royal Enfield classic 350 signals in marsh gray army style bike taking it out to run it a little bit to get some miles on it so i have the first service done going to cross country over there uh by metuchen gonna meet one of our guys uh fnr he's calling he's going in for his uh recall bmw gs uh 1250s had a recall something with uh i don't know software or brake i'm not sure what it is gonna meet up with him want to get some good uh, weather riding it's about 40 degrees not that not that warm not that cold have my heated gear so I'll talk to you on the rain so it's it's Friday I took uh, the Royal Enfield out I have uh, the music on in my ears listening to Fleetwood Mac I'm gonna head over to uh, like I said Metuchen meet up uh, with uh, flying ride over there he's gonna check out new bikes I'm not sure he's buying anything I'm gonna put some miles on the bike you know expect bad weather in the next few days so might as well you know to get uh, some miles in you see the weather up there it only gets worse so put some miles on the bike and that's hey, I had a little a little hiccup with the, the other camera. I had to replace the cameras. Thankfully, I got two GoPros. One is now in my pocket. Because uh, I was going to tell you what I like about this motorcycle. Let me hit the highway again. Let me get it back up to speed. The cruising speed. This bike, the Royal Enfield Classic is really a smooth, a really, a really, really smooth bike. I make the engine, I don't know if they put a counterbalancer inside. It's a single cylinder. There's uh, zero vibrations, no vibrations whatsoever. It's not, a, it's not a fast bike. It's comfortable cruising speed. You feel the bike is comfortable at 65, anything above 65. Uh, it will go up to 73 I tried I got 73 with it but then you feel that it's it's having a hard time it's it's not enjoying itself between 60 and 65 it's its comfort zone and it's effortless like the riding on it even riding position is so neutral so I don't know so comfortable and it's it's five speed the gearbox is butter smooth like really really smooth I think even even slightly too smooth and what I mean is that once you come off your Harley and you're used to that increased force in your in your foot to, to shift up and down all of a sudden you come to this bike and you just you just think of, of pressing that shifter and the gear goes to the right place but because you're used to so you know such an aggressive riding and, and you switch over to this smooth gearing uh, the smooth gearbox you kind of tempted to like go very gentle on it and it happened to me more than once that I went actually even too too gentle too smooth and I uh, I got a, a false a false neutral like in between second and third I got a false neutral so uh, once you get used to it uh, for it being so light it's it's such a, a pleasure it's a delightful ride that's the smoothness of the bike but what pushed me or what what made me uh, uh, sell my adventure bike my Himalayan my Royal Enfield Himalayan well as you remember I bought that Royal Enfield about a year ago main uh, purpose for that bike was a second bike that would uh, serve me you know in town playing around and also doing the BDR and doing doing some off-road riding that the guys thinking of doing and started buying all kinds of expensive bikes and stuff GS's and Triumph Tigers the Pan America and Jerry had a Pan America so I was gonna you know I kind of felt that it's gonna be uh, 
a passing fad, a trend that will not hold, do not sustain. So I said, you know what, let me get a small, cool looking bike. And I, I, when I was doing the research, it was a really, really cool looking bike, very utilitarian, very reliable, and very underpriced, I think. So that's what pretty much pushed me to, to pick up that bike. Opa, was that? <laughs> Got uh, some police action going on over there. Anyway, so that's when I picked up the ADV. And as I thought and expected, we didn't get to do much with it, but I, whenever I was on the bike, I loved it. I loved the bike, and it was a pleasure to ride because it was such a under, you know what, the bike that says, hey, I think I can. I mean, like, oh, look at all you guys with the, all the expensive fuel injectors and big displacement and sophisticated suspension and all the bullshit, and me, a 400 cc bike made in india i can do everything you do and even better and it proved itself uh, if you remember the bike proved itself as a great great off-road a pleasure so i was not getting much use of the bike i was always thinking uh, for a second second bike for the channel because i definitely want to expand to other uh, motorcycles other viewers of her other uh, potential people that would watch the channel and then I had this trip to India with my daughters which was great which was amazing I have a whole video about it it's not doing that great for whatever reason I guess a lot of people not don't care what's uh, of what's going on around uh, you know outside of the USA which is okay I mean but I just thought I'd bring you that and for those of you that will never get a chance to go to India so you get a chance to see it through my lens anyway great 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 time over there and obviously all you get to see over there is Royal Enfield now I don't know if you watch my video if you uh, know me before I talk about it quite a quite a bit is that I've been in India when I was uh, 27 years old 28 years old with my wife at the time we were there for like six months and we rode a Royal Enfield 350 Classic for four months all around India and when I got there uh, last month with my daughters it triggered it just triggered something and you know riding a motorcycle there's a lot of you know technical technical aspects of it but you all know that the main main reason for riding a motorcycle is for the emotional part of it whether being it you know uh, they call it like wind therapy but it's pretty much the freedom the memories the thoughts the excitement everything that works on your brain and on your heart that's that's what's triggered when you are on a motorcycle and uh, the emotions and memories that came up from my tr well with my trip now with my daughters was those great great memories and great feelings that I had years ago with my wife and I just wanted to live that moment again I wanted to be filled with those emotions and feelings again so when I came back back to America I said I am getting a Royal Enfield classic and when I saw uh, I went to the dealership there are a lot of nice uh, classics they have from beautiful chrome and uh, shiny paint paint jobs which are all beautiful but they also have the signals series which is what I'm on which is pretty much um, a throwback to uh, military style bikes and for some reason I don't know ever since uh, I don't know last 10 years I, I'm drawn I guess because of my history in the military I'm drawn to military styling military colors military even even clothes I wear sometimes I find myself wearing you know <laughs> uniforms not not literally a uniform but colors that colors and and clothes that remind me of the uniform from my time in my in the service so I said I'm gonna get this bike went over 
I didn't trade a bike. I was able to uh, sell it to one of our buddies, and I'm happy it's one of the guys we keep riding with, Steve. So at least he's going to enjoy it. I gave him a very fair and good price, actually. And I picked up, picked up this bike, and I love it. And I already went on eBay, and uh, local dealers, obviously a lot of the parts, by the way, a lot of the parts that you get here, the other way around, a lot of the parts that you can get in India and in Europe, you cannot get to, you cannot get in America. They don't bring them over to America. So there's a lot of dealers or, or stores on eBay where you can order parts. So a lot, of, a lot of the parts are on their way coming from India now. I'm gonna make it a really cool military style looking bike. Again, it's not it's not a fast bike, it's just a joy, a joy to ride. You can see now I'm going, I don't know, 65, 65, and it's a really comfortable ride. Look at the mirrors, they're barely shaking. You see? And this is a singer cylinder. I tell you, Royal Enfield in the last uh five, seven years did a a huge huge turnaround and uh, I think they brought in a lot of talented engineers from the industry and the, turned the company around they, they emphasize on quality control and they give you by the way on this bike I, I think it's like like no other motor company they give you three years warranty three years warranty unlimited mileage what other company gives you that? That's how confident they are in their motorcycles. Anyway, they did a great job in terms of styling, in terms of marketing, and um, really did a good job. Really enjoyable bike. See, these are the cool colors I was talking about. I got to cross country cycles and Metuchen, but these are the colors I was talking about, the color schemes. Look at this, look at this chrome over here. Well, FNR couldn't make it for his own reasons. I'm gonna be heading back home after I rest a little bit and grab a cup of coffee on your by uh, Dunkin' Donuts. It's always amazing to come see beautiful bikes. It's always fun to come to a motorcycle dealership and just walk around, smell the new rubber of the tires and the engines. Pop those emotions, like I said before. Well, that was it. I mean, even though FNR stood me up, <laughs> he's not gonna like that comment. It was fun just to go go out a little bit to ride, to put some miles on the bike, to see those new motorcycles. And uh, I just remembered that, you know, we all love getting excited uh, to see new bikes when they come out with new models. And every once in a while we want to switch up our bike, sell our old bike, buy a new one. And it became kind of addicting to do it on a frequent on a freaking uh, basis on a regular basis every year model to switch the bike which uh, it's very expensive and it's costly so one advantage one advantage of having owning a cheaper bike is that you can actually do that so 
I didn't take much of a hit when I sold my bike and upgraded to this one so it's always a, f a fun thing to do to get into that uh, excitement of uh, new bike ownership without taking much of a beating when you sell your bike and buy a new one so that's one good thing of uh, owning uh, a cheaper a more let's put it a more affordable motorcycle so that was also uh, pretty much uh, one of the considerations is like I didn't take much of a hit and that was easier for me to decide to, to get rid of my uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan and picking up this classic 350 I'm enjoying it very much you see New Jersey Turnpike I'm going northbound back home that's it hope you enjoyed my little babble over here it's Sandy I'm Sandy you're watching Holy Shift channel the number one channel on the whole internet thing in YouTube on YouTube yeah yep that's my channel so if you're not subscribed and you want to hear and see more of my bullshit do me a favor click on the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video or want to share it with somebody else give me a thumbs up I appreciate it thank you so much want to uh, thank also my patreons Fred Jose and Daniel thank you so much guys um, I'll peace out see you in the next video bye bye